everyone, it is Carrie from Reset Brain and Body today with your Mental Health Monday series. So once again, we are continuing to talk about narcissism. It is week two, and this week we are talking about how to actually deal with that narcissist in your life. So last week, hopefully, you were able to understand how someone becomes a narcissist, what is a narcissist, what does it look like, uh, what sort of behaviors show up, and then maybe you are able to identify for yourself some of those qualities that you might have, um, and then you're like, ding, 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 I might need to talk to someone, uh, or someone in your life. And so now it's like, okay, what do we do about it? Because more likely than not, if there's a narcissist in your life or someone that behaves with a lot of narcissistic traits, then you've had some trauma, some really troubling times. Um, you probably have felt, felt a lot of guilt or other intense emotions when dealing with this person. And usually the overriding feeling is, I just want this person to learn and do better, fix their mistakes, own what they've done and what they've done to other people and change. So if you're in that boat, keep listening. So the first thing to really understand about someone who is a narcissist or is uh, has a lot of narcissistic traits is that usually, most of the time, they are not malintentioned. So of the different types of narcissists that I talked about last week, the malignant narcissist, that one that is engaging in kind of cheating, stealing, um, unlawful, like really pretty horrible <laughs> types of behaviors. Now they usually don't care if they cause harm and they will cause harm because again, they're thinking I am more important than everyone else and I'm putting my needs first. And so the malignant narcissist usually does have some type of malintention. It is uh, intentionally trying to hurt other people. Now, the other types of narcissists really truly lack the self-awareness to know better. And I know that initially, especially if you have someone who is narcissistic in your life, you can be like, oh, how can that be? That's so wrong. How can we just excuse their behavior but they don't know any better? But it really is true. They truly lack a fundamental source of self-awareness to understand the implications of their behavior. And so they lack the understanding on how their actions impact other people. They lack accountability and the ability to take ownership over their behavior. And they lack the ability to compromise. And so all of these different deficiencies in their own awareness may lead them to engaging in activity that hurts other people or angers other people, uh, annoys other people, uh, puts other people in compromising situations, but they're not doing it because they're intending to hurt someone. And so it's really, really, really important to first just depersonalize it, that it's not about you as an individual. It's not about this person trying to make your life specifically more difficult. It's not about this person hating you or trying to make you miserable. They just lack that self-awareness and guaranteed that however they treat you is how they treat all of their relationships or at least the majority of them. Okay, so this is a really important thing just to know about people that are more narcissistic. So how do you deal? Well, first you need to have that awareness, right? It's important to start looking at the difficult relationships in your life and if you're able to say, huh, I actually think that that person either might be an actual narcissist or they are narcissistic. And so by giving yourself that opportunity to name and label their behavior, then you're offering yourself some freedom to be able to step back and observe objectively. And that's sort of like a mindfulness practice, right? When you're able to step back, see things clearly, clearly and not react to them in the moment, because more likely than not, this person who's narcissistic makes you really irritable, makes you really frustrated and really hurts you. And then the easy thing to do and the familiar thing, probably because you've been having to deal with it for a large portion of your life is to react, to immediately you know, jump in and say something or wanna call them out on something. And it's just not the most productive use of your energy. So the more that you can step back, observe, say, okay, 
this person is narcissistic. This is just what they do. They truly do not have the self-awareness. I can't take this personally. It's not about me. It is about them. Well, then you see by creating that distance, you're able to just, ah, okay, I can be more clear headed. What do I want to do next? How do I want to respond? Right? Because that's the difference between reacting and responding. So in that response, then you have opportunities in the moment. One of the best techniques for working with someone who is or dealing with someone who is narcissistic is to go the gray rock technique. And that's literally like you assume a gray rock, which is pretty boring, bland, and uneventful. A gray rock does nothing. So you do nothing. And I know that's hard. I know it's really hard to bite your tongue, shrug, dismiss, ignore, numb out intentionally (laughs) from whatever is coming at you from the narcissist. And this is just really important because you're not giving them more power or fuel to use it against you. What is the narcissist seeking? Attention, validation, recognition. They feel so unworthy to the core that they're needing to get that attention from anyone. So you reacting and you giving them more attention is exactly what they want. So if you can become non-reactive and instead responsive in a calm, grounded state and choose to intentionally just disengage, you are not giving them any power. And instead, you're retaining the power. That's the gray rock, gray rock technique. So if you do engage in the behavior, you can expect then those big reactions. And then in those reactions, typically it feels really personal, right? How could you do this to me? Why aren't you giving me what I need? You know, I really think that this is about you and not me. Like you're making me feel horrible. You know, how could you make me feel this bad about myself? Like, look what you did to me, right? The narcissist is naturally a victim. So then you feel guilty and you feel ashamed and you feel really badly that you did this to someone just by simply reacting, by trying to hold someone accountable. But because the narcissistic tendency is to belittle your own experience and to make you question your truth and your feelings, then you're gonna walk away from that interaction being like, what just happened? What did I do wrong? Oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? right? So that is why, again, assuming the gray rock is the safest and most protective way in which you can interact. But alternatively, you can totally walk away. And yes, easier said than done. But this is where we employ boundaries. And this is boundaries where that's it. I'm not having this person in my life anymore. I'm eliminating them from my life. It's not worth it. It's too toxic. They need to either change or I need to recognize that there's no There's no reason why this person needs to be in my life. They're not serving me at all. And all of their interactions make me feel bad and they're never going to change. So you just say, okay, that's it. I'm done, which is really hard, (laughs) but it is an option. You have a choice in this, especially when it comes to your own mental health and wellness or the families that you're trying to protect. Alternatively, you can just set strict boundaries. So knowing that you're only gonna engage with them on your terms, right? A lot of times a narcissist or someone who's narcissistic will call a lot, right? They're really needy. You say, no, 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 I'm only gonna answer the phone when I'm in a good mood, when I'm ready to create the space for them, when I'm going to respond instead of react, when I know that I can set myself up to go gray rock, and just <clears throat> meet their needs, whatever they might be, just usually just listening or agreeing with whatever they're venting about with whomever um, was putting them <laughs> in a stressful situation, whoever talked down to them, whoever, right, they're victim blaming. And so there's going to be a lot of, um, I just need a vent about all these other people and blame all these other people. But you want to be in a place where you can respond. So do things on your terms. Invite them only over when you feel like you have the capacity to do so. Um, Only engage with limited amount of time. Set those boundaries of, you know what? I'm gonna call you once a week. That's when we're gonna check in. So those are things that you can do to set those boundaries. But here's the thing, beware. This is a big beware. (laughs) When you start to go gray rock or set the boundaries, you will get pushback. You'll get pushback not only from the person who's narcissistic, but you will also get pushback from the enablers. 
And you probably know the enablers and maybe you're like, oh, I think I might be one of those enablers. The person that encourages their behavior and agrees with everything they're saying and doesn't stand up to them and doesn't ever hold them accountable. And it's just like, rolls over, okay, yep, do whatever. And I'm gonna keep allowing you to do that because I'm not gonna set boundaries. And I'm gonna let you just engage all the time and just wreak havoc everywhere. Most of the time, the enablers are in a codependent relationship in which they think truly that they can fix this person. And that's why they keep trying and trying and trying and keep giving them the benefit of the doubt. And also, as in this codependent relationship, the enabler also is subject to a lot of guilt all the time. Oh, I can't leave them because every time I try and set a boundary, they say they're um, going to you know, divorce me or they say that they are going to engage in suicide or they threaten suicide. That's a really common one with narcissists um, or take things away uh, if it has to do with money or kids, something else, friendship, jobs, etc. Um, they usually have a lot of threats that they throw. Most of the time they're empty threats, but they do threaten a lot. So that enabler feels really guilty when they do start to set boundaries and disengage. So if you have an enabler in your life, they're going to push back on you. They're going to try and make you feel badly. They're going to say, how could you desert this person? How can you not be there? Like they really need you. They're really fragile. Because remember from last week is that a lot of people that are covert, kind of secretive narcissists, it comes off looking like depression. So it comes off as if these, as if these people are really, really fragile and they need a ton of support and a lot of love. And that's simply just not the case. <laughs> um, they are doing this to themselves. And so it's not about a normal depressed person that can get the tools and have accountability and move on and rise up and be resilient uh, eventually <laughs> with the right things in place. Uh, someone who's a covert narcissist just really, they, they will not change. And that is one of the biggest things that you need to walk away from is that a narcissist will not change unless they finally have the self-awareness to take themselves to therapy and do the work and really do the work and dig down and get vulnerable and expose the roots of their condition. So you might feel guilty from other people. You might feel guilty because you feel like they're depressed. You aren't able to truly name or label what's actually going on. So again, you have to be able to create some distance to be able to objectively observe, to respond instead of react, to set boundaries, to be intentional with your actions, and then be ready for the discomfort of guilt. I hope this helps you this week. I will answer any questions or comments that I see that come across. Um, we will continue on learning more about narcissism next week, and I can't wait to join you then. Take care.